Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for uh, showing up, joining us. It's good to see you all. Welcome to Draw This in Your Style. It's so, so lovely to have you all here today. Hi, Steve, Umicorn. Good to see you all. Kevin, Sam, hello, hello. Good to see you. RB, nice to see you. Thank you so much. Gareth, um, Ahiha, thank you so much for joining. Welcome. Um, so today we are joined by the lovely guest, Elena Comte. How are you doing today, Elena? Hi, thank you. I'm doing really well. <laughs> That's great. Um, so if you guys uh, have never um, watched the Draw This In Your Style segment, basically um, Draw This In Your Style is when an artist will create an illustration specifically for um, this hashtag and they will upload it online for anyone to recreate that same illustration in their own personal artistic style. Um, so on this show, we do that, but with a little bit of a twist. Um, so before the stream, me and Elena chose a theme, bedtime stories, and we each created um, an illustration and now we are swapping them on stream to be able to draw each other's. Um, but before we check out uh, the artwork that we're gonna be working on, I'm going to give it over to Elena for a few minutes so she can give you a little bit of an intro to who she is and what kind of artwork she makes. Okay, so hi, uh, I'm Elena. I'm an illustrator uh, from Canada, more precisely from Quebec. And uh, now I'm living in the Netherlands. So it's quite late here, it's midnight, but I'm really happy to be here. And um, my work is about, uh, I love to make illustrations for children mainly, but I also enjoy to make illustrations for um, um, adult as well. I love to make patterns. So that's the most things I do for my clients. And I'm also in uh, the process of making my first uh, children's book with a publishing company from Quebec. So I'm really proud of that. Yeah, that's so amazing. I, I just love your um, your kids work and Elena and your your patterns and everything. I'm it's it's so amazing to see everything that you've created in the last year. Um, since I've been following you, I, I just love your work so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. All of your characters are so cute. Um, yeah. So if you guys uh, want to uh, give uh, don't forget to give Elena a follow on Instagram and we will head over to um, Photoshop and Fresco so we can show you guys what we'll be working on today. Um, so this illustration here above me is Elena's that I will be recreating. She made this one before the stream. And this one is the one that I created and Elena will be re uh, redrawing that one on the stream today. So if you guys want to recreate either of these on uh, in your own style, you can very well do so. We would love to see your work. Um, you can post your work online with the hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS, or you can post it in the Photoshop Discord in the Draw This In Your Style uh, channel. And we will be looking at those, um, looking at some of the entries at the end of the stream. We actually have some entries for this theme already. So uh, we're going to check those out for uh, towards the last few minutes of the stream. But we are going to go ahead and get, get working on our sketches here. We both kind of um, got a little bit of a head start um, since this is sadly only a one hour segment. So there isn't that much time to work. Um, but I'm really loving what you're working on uh, so far, Elena. I really like the um, canopy that you did over the bed. That's really cute. Thank you. <laughs> oh, OK, sorry, I forgot to <laughs> remove this. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. I was trying to make it more personal in in a way, so I thought I would ask, add that. <laughs> Good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Umicorn, yes. Uh, Elena is from the Netherlands. Yes, she is living in the Netherlands currently. Hi, Annika. Hi, Viola. Welcome. Good to see you. Yes, it is midnight for Elena. I can't believe she agreed to this. <laughs> it's so late for her. I would have been in bed if I were her. <laughs> yeah, and I have children that wake up at six, so oh. <laughs> every day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So yeah, so I started with the background a little bit, um, and I think for me, I might change it up. Um, I was thinking about doing um, a little leather armchair. I have this reference mm -hmm. photo here, um, uh, just to kind of change it up since we both did beds. Um, so I thought I would uh, change it up, maybe make this like a living room space instead of a bedroom space. Um, but yeah <laughs> yeah good idea i'm looking forward to see your version with the chair <laughs> uh Murangua says elena nice work awesome giving you lots of love for your sketch <laughs> uh, thank you If you guys have any questions about um, uh, Elena's work or her career or anything like that, maybe um, about her children's book or anything like that, um, throw them in chat. I actually have a couple of questions for Elena. I'm curious to hear about how did you start using the colors that you use? The colors now? Because yeah. I feel I change the colors I use all the time, but I try to make sure I keep a, a certain uh, set, certain main colors in the mix. And then I, I I feel I played for the last two years. I think I added more colors to these and I decided how they fit together. I try, I try, and I, then I remove some of them. And I noticed recently what works best for me is to just choose the ones I really, really care about, the ones are the, the ones that I prefer. And then I just choose all the colors that I reject. Like I just rejected so many colors and mm -hmm. then the rest just works together. And I just try to use the same colors over and over again. Yeah, your, um, your Instagram looks really cohesive. Uh, the color palette, it looks really beautiful. Um, do you spend a lot of time like planning what your Instagram feed looks like? I used to do that a lot before, but now that I have the colors that I use the most, it's it's easier and it goes faster. Now, mm -hmm. almost every piece I make, it just fits together now because I try to stick to exactly the same colors I like. So for example, I notice I really like browns. So I have a lot of these. And so the other colors, for example, the, the kind of blue green I use recently, this one it's like one of the only greens or i have another blue that i use but in these blues and green i try to have just one or two and mm -hmm. not as much brown choice colors so yeah so this is yeah so now it's easier to uh to plan my feed if i can say but even like during last summer you see that the colors change drastically like to me it feels like a it's the, it's a new color palette that I'm using this fall, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you, um, since you pick the same colors all the time, do you like keep a, a color palette? Like, do you like save your swatches, your color swatches like on, on Fresco? I find it hard. I try to save my color palette in the Adobe uh, color uh, swatches. Mm -hmm. And it works well, but usually I'm I'm looking for the color I use in one illustration I did earlier. So I'm like, oh, I would like this color I use. So then I cannot find it anymore. So I usually go pick again in the mm -hmm. in my old illustration. This way, I'm sure it's the same color. I do that too. I okay. I um, keep my swatches. Um, I have like my whole palette saved, but a lot of the time I'll still open old artwork and just like 
almost steal color the, my color palette from an old artwork piece. Yeah, um, that's what I do. I think yeah. most of the time, <laughs> it's so much faster than try and. Because I also I would never be sure if it's exactly the same color and I mm -hmm. want my feed, like you said, and I want my style to be recognizable. Also, I would like to reach that. So that's why I, I want to be really specific with my colors. Yeah, definitely. I think your style is very recognizable um, and oh, your please. colors. Yeah, your colors are really recognizable. I, I, I can tell when I'm when I'm scrolling on my feed that it's immediately your artwork because of the colors that you use. Okay, nice. I'm happy <laughs> to hear that. Yeah. Hey Vanessa, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just catching up on chat really quick, you guys. Thank you so much for, for being here. Really appreciate it. So yeah, I'm just uh, trying to sketch in this armchair with this uh, reference that I have here. Um, I'm not very good with perspective, especially when I'm on the spot on, <laughs> on the live stream, but I decided to give myself a challenge here. I could have done the chair first when I, before I went on stream, but I decided not to for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> um, so Elena, how did you uh, get your first book deal? Um, I was very lucky. They <laughs> contacted me. They saw my work on the a website in Quebec about a portfolio for illustra illustrator oh. and they found my work there and they contacted me and they said oh my wow we love your work so much like we dream if you accept to work with us and I was like I was like is this a joke I was not sure at first <laughs> I was like just seemed unreal and then I learned it was a really good publishing company so I was also even more happy with that so wow yeah I have a lot of people that know that company and they told me oh wow you're yeah you're lucky to have yeah it was I think it's also because the work I posted on the, on that website and the thing that I shared like the work I've done lately just before I got the contract it was it resonated with me a lot like I felt I reached that point where the artwork I made I felt like it it was more like closer to me, if I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think maybe they felt that, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think uh, companies can definitely tell when um, an artist is passionate about the work that they're creating um, because it you can just, you can just feel um, the emotion that's put into the artwork, I think, from the artist um, and you can tell whether an artist like really loves their work or not yeah it's true but that's really cool um so is it is it a picture book or a series or what it's, yeah it's or... a no sorry no it's okay okay <laughs> it's a 30 32 page uh, picture book like the standard size for a picture book and um it's all uh, illustrations so we did the first um meeting a video call and then we just with the author we just talk about the story and we just gave in all our ideas for all the scenes and then I will decide what illustrations I do like spot illustration or like full scenes double page uh, scenes yeah and then it it plans to go out next fall in 2022 oh that's so cool yeah that's so exciting yeah do you have um, do you have a literary agent at all? No, no, I don't. Wow, that is very cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam in chat is asking, how long do you usually spend on one illustration? How long does it take you? Um. Or like the small, it depends because if I have an inspiration, I just 
I saw something, a color, a shape, or just I have an idea. I just like, for example, the tiger I posted recently. Mm-hmm. This one I did it quite quickly. I just because I knew how a cat it looked like, and it was easy for me to just draw the shape like roughly. And then I wanted to keep the looseness of the painting, so I just painted really roughly, and I just went with my intuition, and it went pretty pretty quickly. I would say. Probably this one took me maybe one to two hours, but it's just a central cat. It's there's nothing else, and I didn't do any like extensive research. I didn't try many things, so this one is that that would be like the quickest. And when I do like um, seen like this one, maybe it can take me. I would say this one took me a lot of time. I felt the pressure, like <laughs> I. I want it to be like easy to, for you to participate in and draw, but also like have a lot of things you can change. But yeah, I would say in general, I would say at least four hours and it can go up to 11 hours, even more like if, if it's something really important and I just have to redo it over and over again, I just work on it until I'm finished and it can, it can take forever. I feel <laughs> yeah, maybe I know a, that feeling, <laughs> Yeah, maybe maximum 15 hours, I would say. Yeah. I've never actually timed myself, but that sounds about right for me too, about that time. I probably should time myself. I time myself, but like I rarely go back to look at everything, but yeah, I should be more precise. Probably sometimes I draw many illustrations at the same time. So it's not also like specifically I allow time for time for drawing, but I don't know like exactly which one I was drawing at that time. Do you like the sketching process more or the coloring process? It's new, but now I like the sketch sketching more, but really? it's really new. Before I felt like I was so uncomfortable that I would just would go really quickly. And now I find it so relaxing. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I think it was really frustrating before because ne- every time I was trying something, it didn't work. You know, mm-hmm. I was just like, it was just, I just felt it was a failure all the time. And when I added colors, I felt it was already looking better. But now I feel like my sketch are getting more... Um, satisfying for me so when I draw I'm like oh this works now this works <laughs> so I think because I practice more also makes a difference yeah you you practice way more than I do I'll admit that <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got your iPad with you all the time I see on your Instagram stories um, you go to the park and you draw on your iPad a lot that's pretty cool yeah, it really helps me relax, I think. And also I feel with children, like when they play with other kids or when they are busy, if you're there, you just feel, you can feel bored quite easily, I think. So <laughs> I think it's nice that I can, I really enjoy that I can do that anywhere I go. I think it's mm-hmm. so convenient and yeah. Yeah, I just got my first iPad about a year ago, um, and I love it. I love being able to to not have to be at my desk to be able to do digital artwork. It's really convenient. Yeah, and also, also I feel we have so much work to do on the computer, so I enjoy like changing position or working in another space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't have to sit uh, sit down all day long. You can get up and move to the couch or move outside even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hi, Randall. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Sam says, I have a surprisingly hard time nailing down how long I spend on things. Yeah, you would think as me and you, Sam, as live streamers, we would know how long it takes us to do something because we're on camera doing it, but I still have no idea how long it takes me to do an illustration. (laughs) Hi, Gareth. Did I already say hi to you? If if I did, that's fine. Two highs for Gareth. (laughs) Hi, Odari. Welcome. How are you doing? I think it's also difficult to uh, to uh, to know because 
there are so many things that can go wrong. Sometimes we think, oh, this one will be so quick and then something something doesn't work and then we have to take it a step back and sometimes we have to wait a couple of days and go back and then we find what, what didn't work. So it's sometimes it's unexpected, but it takes way more, more time. And sometimes we just paint something and we're like, wow, that was quick. It, everything wor- works so well. So Yeah, definitely. Some days I feel like um, I get up and I just suddenly forgot how to draw. Like all of my <laughs> lines aren't working well and I just kind of have to stop <laughs> and come yes. back to it the next day or come back to it later that day um, because I just feel frustrated with what I'm making and my lines just aren't working. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gotta take yes, a break and true. come back to it later. <laughs> Um, do you use a lot of reference for um, like your your kids' illustrations and stuff? I see you have like reference photos of kids' rooms and th- those are very cute kids' rooms, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I love kids' room. They're so inspiring. <laughs> also yeah. the colors. I'm really inspired by the colors of kids' room. Uh, yeah, I use I use them a lot, especially in the beginning, just to find ideas because I feel I don't have much imagination to find ideas. I'm mm. always like what should I draw? What can I add there? So I just don't know. Usually that's why I think I'm more, I'm easily drawn to just draw one subject in the middle of the page and nothing else, but I'm trying to add more uh, details. And so I'm trying to look at things now in my environment or where I go. And I try to look more at uh, home furniture and things like that, that I didn't really notice before. Usually Mm. I would more look at like things in nature and I would remember these but in houses they're so like common things that I don't see them really so now I'm trying to see oh okay drawers are like like this and windows they have like a border otherwise I'm like how do you draw a window it's like (laughs) but yeah and then I feel like when you try and you learn then you have that one you draw you have drawn once and then you know you can make that lamp and then you think oh you just build your memory of things yeah 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 definitely um i remember one time i was live streaming and i forgot how to draw a fork (laughs) (laughs) yeah forks are hard and spoons as well yeah (laughs) they're a lot more complicated than you would think (laughs) yes Again, everyone, um, just a reminder. Also, uh, before I go into that reminder, if you're over on YouTube, uh, come over to Behance because that is where our main chat is. And if you have any questions for me and Elena, you can um, uh, type them in our main chat over here on behance.net slash Adobe Live, and we'll be able to answer them for you. We're actually, sadly, not looking at the YouTube chat, but we are looking over at the Behance chat. And also, if you would like to recreate um, mine or Elena's or both, um illustrations for this um theme bedtime stories you can feel free to do so please do um and you can post your work online with hashtag adobe live dtiys or in the photoshop discord in the channel uh draw this in your style i forgot what this show was called for a second there <laughs> i'm out welcome steve hi Welcome everyone. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. (laughs) I love the little lamp that you drew too. That's very cute. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I thought I wanted I like your ideas at your idea. I th- at first I was about to do the same and then I thought how can I be uh, different like and I I thought maybe this because it's an animal, they are closer to bugs, like bugs might be their pets, because <laughs> for us it's animals, but I thought, what kind of bug could I add? And I found a photo of a, a snail, because uh, children, when they sleep, they have these, I don't know the name, I forgot, but these low light uh, lamps night light. that they, night lights. So yeah. I found this and I was like, oh, I can make it, because it, it, it wouldn't have enough light to read a book. So I thought, oh, I can add just, that on the top <laughs> that's very cute i love that i love Thank the you. um thought process that goes behind uh things like that in an illustration that people might not realize like like sh- like sh- uh, elena just said you know like it's a small animal like a 
a rabbit or a mouse. So, um, you know, they might be friends with bugs or anything like that. So it's like all those little small details and thoughts <clears throat> that go into almost like a background story for the illustration. It's very cute. Yeah, the, the background stories, I try to think about this a lot more. I didn't used to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I and I notice also in your illustrations, I see that usually your characters are doing something or there's a, and I, I was thinking, oh, I have a tendency to just draw some something that just an animal that poses or characters that poses, but they don't do anything. There's nothing like going on, you know? So I thought I would like to add that more in my illustration this year. Mm. Yeah, it's funny you say that because um... I, like with the illustrations that I do, I actually struggle doing patterns and stuff that you do. I actually struggle with just like drawing um, just like one simple character um, sometimes. Oh, okay. uh, some, yeah, it's it's funny how <laughs> the grass is greener on the other side, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and why would you say that? Why would you, do you feel you need to add more or it's I, I guess I don't I don't really know I've definitely tried to make patterns um I I I really don't know if I can answer that question I, I don't know I okay <laughs> yeah I'm no not problem. sure <laughs> it's just like I um I think as an artist you kind of just like a lot of the time tr like end up going back to your comfort zone and sticking to what you're used to yeah um, of course and I've tried to do patterns a few times. I've been successful with patterns, but it's not something that I um, kind of like naturally gravitate towards. Mm. Yeah. Viola says, I once forgot how to spell corner and I was in the middle of a writing breaking new writing a breaking news story. Yeah, that's that happens sometimes, right? You know, your your brain just goes <laughs> shutting down. <laughs> <laughs> I have to figure out how I'm gonna fit in the little um little kid character to the little mouse mouse child. I really love the um, the face shape of the little kid here. The, these simple shapes here, it's almost like a, a rounded rectangle for the nose and just a very large circle for the for the head. I really love that face shape that you did for the for the kid. It looks very oh, cute. Oh nice. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Yeah. Also, their pose is very cute, too. It was difficult. I changed, like, I did many different poses, and <laughs> I try to... Usually, I'm so realistic, or I do things, and I'm like, this is not possible, or this is not... It re like, I, oh, my brain is always telling me, this doesn't make sense. Like, don't do that. Just, do, like, so... But this time I was like, no, no, it can be weird. It will be more interesting if it's like not realistic. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's a that's something with children's illustrations specifically too. Is that um, not everything has to be very realistic? Yeah. Um, like the 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 perspective doesn't have to be perfect, or the anatomy doesn't have to be perfect. But I think as artists, we kind of like want it to be perfect but then you have to remind yourself that I can get away with certain things not being perfect and um like if you look in children's uh, books a lot of the time you'll um kind of when you're just turning the pages looking at the whole illustration you won't even see like all of the missing details but really in all reality there's probably a lot of details like realistic details that are left out and you don't even notice it yeah I try to tell myself like does what does it su suggest what mm -hmm. I I've drawn and I'm asking myself is it enough for the viewer to understand and I try to keep that as minimal as possible just to make the reading really quick and and clear Yeah exactly it's like when you're when you're drawing a a brick wall 
you don't need to draw every single brick for the viewer to understand that it's a brick wall. So there's yep. like a lot of implication there. Um, you don't have to draw every single little detail for our brains to kind of fill in the gaps. Yeah. This is also why I draw. I think it's because it's less crowded than real life. It's organized, <laughs> you know, it's it's just relaxing because it's all as minimal. There's mm -hmm. not as many uh, details because things are really complex. I noticed like even earlier today, I tried to draw a, another kind of window, but I noticed it was already like so complex. It looked realistic because I, I have drawn it like it really looks like how it really looks. Mm -hmm yeah have you always done a children's style um art style or did you, is this a new style for you yeah it's new i started when i uh i would say i have been drawing more when i got pregnant with my first child it mm. just brought all the inspiration back and i just wanted to paint watercolor flowers <laughs> you know that was my first thing that's when i mostly like restarted because when i was young i used to draw so much as well but when i started back as an adult that's what i started with i just wanted to make patterns with watercolor florals you know mm -hmm. and then i reached that Point and I was like oh my god I want to do more and more and animals now and like I was just I want to try gouache and I just went up and I just move but I always wanted to make things for children but I thought at first like florals for baby blankets you know for children and then that's when I, I realized oh if I practice I learn and then I get better and then maybe one day I'll get good enough to illustrate the children's book but I didn't think it would be that fast I thought maybe in a year or two maybe <laughs> yeah that's really awesome <laughs> yeah I'm so happy for you that you've gotten the the children's book um uh job that's so cool thank you yeah so I think people can start from anywhere and they can go to children's book also because I've tried many things before mm -hmm. <laughs> viola says yep the idea of going slow seems to be taboo these days the snail speaks to me slow down <laughs> Yeah, yes. it's it's hard to keep up with uh, social media. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Sam in the chat is wondering, what was your main kind of style you did before children's books? Um, so was it just that you started out with watercolor or did you do other things? No, I started out with watercolors and I was mainly painting flowers first, like really loose florals. And then I moved to do them more botanical looking. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I just felt so inspired to try new things. So I just moved on. I think after that, I think I painted like animals in watercolors. And then I just really wanted to try gouache. So I just switched again. I went back and forth watercolor gouache. And then I tried digital and I, I love digital, but I didn't have the texture of the gouache and the watercolor. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying, I feel like I've been trying for five years to find it. And now I feel I have it for the most part. That makes me really happy because I feel I've worked on that for years. So it changed a lot over the past few years. My style changed so much. Yeah. Yeah, I've um I've only ever used gouache a little bit, but I really love the um the texture that traditional gouache has. It's really pretty, especially for yeah. children's illustration. 
Yeah. And I think it's also trending. I think people really like that. Mm -hmm. The viewers and like, I think it's, I see that a lot on Instagram and Pinterest. Like I feel it's something people really enjoy. Did you always, uh, did you do artwork when you were a kid or is it something that you started doing as an adult? Uh, my parents told me I used to draw for like nine hours straight when I was young. <laughs> I remember I was drawing all the time. I, I was also doing all kinds of crafts and I was knitting and mm -hmm. yeah. So I was already really like, I really liked doing things with, my hands like mostly with paper I would say because I don't really enjoy uh, play-doh or any like modeling or sculpt sculpting I don't like that really but drawing yeah I've always drawn a lot and in my teenage years I would um, write words like how do you say that calligraphy I was uh -huh. really into that you know in in our agendas at school I was just <laughs> writing and I was even uh, my parents told me I, I could write on my walls if I wanted with mm. paint so I just wrote like sentences quotes like on my all my walls <laughs> and like I just enjoyed like painting everywhere yeah that's so fun yeah I used to do a lot of crafts um when I was a kid too sewing and crafting oh and, wow yeah nice. um I love doing all that kind of stuff but then I stopped like I think I stopped around, maybe I was like around 21 years old. I didn't do anything until I think I was 27, maybe 26, 27. Yeah. I just looked over at your progress. The snail lamp is so cute. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. I think. <laughs> Especially it's not, that. It's not just for kids. <laughs> and the table, I think it looks like they fit together. I saw that table yeah. here. I just thought, oh, it's so cute. So we have um, a little less than, I don't know, like 15 minutes left of working. Um, and again, towards the end of the stream, we're probably going to um, look over some of your guys' awesome entries so far. Um, we have uh, a handful of ones just already from this specific theme. So um, I'm really excited to show you guys those. It's very fun to see um, all of your guys' different interpretations and stuff. Um, that's one of my favorite things about um, Draw This In Your Style is just seeing everyone's different um, different interpretations of the same theme. It's really fun. Yeah, me too. I like that so much. I feel we, we are, it's more like we're working together, all of us, like it's mm -hmm. less, um, I feel less lonely or like, I feel, it feels less like I'm drawing by myself and I'm doing my own thing. It's more like a sharing. Uh, project so it's I really like that have you ever done your own or someone else's draw this in your style before yes I've I've did two on my Instagram and um I like to do them from others I did I think probably five or six oh, wow. from other people I really cool. enjoy that mm-hmm 
Yeah, I've mentioned it um, on here before. I think it's a, a really great project um, for anyone that's maybe feeling stuck or in in artist block and can't figure out what to draw. Um, yeah. It's a it, it, it it's a great way to get back into doing art um, without having to come up with your own um, your own composition, um, yeah. and it makes it a little bit easier to get back into it. Yes, and it also um, makes it forces us to think about ev every detail. Like it, we have to think. Oh, okay, how how does this object relate to my own experience? And I think mm -hmm. this is also fun to, it makes us think think about things we wouldn't think about otherwise. Yeah, definitely. Like how, how am I going to interpret this artwork um, to represent me and yeah. my own artwork? Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of problem solving, definitely. <laughs> Um, Mer uh, Merengua, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, uh, they say, Elena, I have my firstborn sweet angel baby girl. She is three year three and a half years old now. Um, so when it comes to bedtime stories, I think your ideas um, uh, match her. She loves bedtime stories. <laughs> oh, so cute. Nice. I'm really happy you shared your own experience. Yeah, it's, it's so precious, right? For children, I just thought it's something they they all can relate and also as parents it's just something so precious that moment when I think they're so interested and they're so like like they just it's a precious moment with a parent and child and also we can discover so many nice um, illustrations from artists I'm so it's inspired by children's book it's just sometimes I watch them for myself I put them on my desk and I just flip through it's just so inspiring Oh yeah, absolutely. I I don't have kids yet, um, but I have a lot of children's books. <laughs> um, I collect them not only for me and my own inspiration for my artwork, but also for my future children that I want to have. Um, I want to be able to show them certain books and everything. Yeah. I, I realized the other day that every time I draw an animal, I would uh, draw hands for them. And and the other day I was like, oh my God, this animal doesn't have hands, you know? Because when <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, and now I'm like, should I put hands? It's a rabbit. No, it doesn't like, I don't know how they're, um, I don't know, not their they hand. Have, how they have little Pause. Pause. Um, yeah, it's more pause. It's <laughs> yeah. I think they have like four, like four toes, kind of similar to a dog or a a cat, um, similar ish. Yeah. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Good point. Four, four, four toes. <laughs> yeah. For most of my characters, I usually just um, I don't even draw fingers. I usually just draw like little mittens. Um, because oh, yeah. fingers are really hard for me to draw, so I just took out that detail. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay in chat, hello, welcome, uh, says children's books are for age range 0 to 99. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Okay. 
I usually really struggle with um, character anatomy, so I'm actually pretty happy with the fact that this is coming out okay while I'm on live on the live stream because I feel like normally I would have been a, it would have been a total fail for me <laughs> doing this on stream. Yeah, you're good. It's really good, and it's really complex to draw those two together because their their silhouette is. It's not defined, they're so close together, so it's mm -hmm. difficult, but they're so cute. I love oh, the small you. mouse. Yeah, I had the small mouse sit on the arm of the chair instead of <laughs> next, it's to a the, good idea. next to the parents. So um, it might be more obvious once I start to add color a little bit later. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, tomorrow we have day two of this live stream. Um, and we will be adding color to our artwork here. So if you guys want to uh, come back for that, it will be same time, same place at uh, 3 to 4 p.m. PST. Viola says, I love mice in art, in real life, not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And in Amsterdam, there's so many mouse, you can see them running almost oh, really? everywhere. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Are they big? Um, I don't know what their size is, is usually, but like I would say, like, this big. That's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think the, yeah, I think they look cute also, but maybe if if they were in my house, I would I wouldn't find cute. But when they are outside, I feel like it's like squirrels a little bit. Like, uh huh. Because I don't see any squirrel squirrels here, but I see a uh, mouse sometimes. <laughs> I love squirrels; they're so cute. Yeah, I love them too. <laughs> yeah, uh, New York has some pretty big rats too. Uh, probably oh. twice the size of those. <laughs> oh wow! I yeah, didn't know that. They're really big. <laughs> they're famous for their big rats. Oh okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I really like how you um, how you drew the the rug to the carrot rug. It looks very cute. I like that. Oh, thank you. Your little details, the the way that you sketch, um, just uh, your line weights, your different line weights has um, a lot of character to it. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah, I love that the, the the weight I could. That's the thing I think I find the most relaxing, just to put the pressure and re release it all the time. I just enjoy that mm. very much. This brush is also, I like this one. It's Cause Drawing Box, mm. colored pencil uh, CS5. I think it looks like an actual uh, colored pencil and the texture is also nice. Yeah, Kyle has some really great brushes. Um, I'm using one of his brushes for sketching right now uh, called Happy HB. That's in the drawing box as well in the mega pack if you guys are interested in downloading those. Um, you can get all of Kyle's brushes for free if you have a an Adobe CC sub too.
Umicorn says, I once tried to pet a tiny mouse as a child. It bit me and I never came near one ever since. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it, must, it must have hurt, I think. Yeah. My sister also tried to pet a squirrel, but she was <laughs> the squirrel. Also, that I think she was giving, she was not giving him food, but I think the squirrel thought it. She was, she had something in her hand, but yeah, she was hurt. All right, you guys. Well, it is that time. Uh, we are going to go ahead and look at entries now. Um, again, if you guys want to um, submit your own entry, feel free to post online with hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS, or you can post it in the Photoshop. Uh, Discord under the channel, draw this in your style. Um, but right now we're going to go over to Instagram and check out um, some of our entries that we have over there. Cause I've seen a handful of ones for this specific theme. So we are going to pop over there. So, <laughs> okay. Are you able to see um, this entry page that I have up Alina? Yes, yes, I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have, um, I don't know if any of these artists are in chat. If you are in chat, please let me know. We'd love to say hi to you and stuff, but yeah. So this entry is really beautiful. I love the um, the textures on this one. It has kind of a, a chalky texture and the, the paper in the background is really beautiful too. Really nice, um, a nice, a nice representation of Elena's Elena's piece there, really beautiful. Um, I wanted to, and we have all of these other entries as well. So many other beautiful entries from our past uh, themes. Also, this one was uh, uh, from uh, Ragonia's theme. If you guys watched uh, watched that live stream, I really love the color palette on this one. It's so bright and fun. Um, and then we also have this one. This one was recreated of mine. I really love the um, the really bright colors on this. It's so cute. And the face, the facial expression is really cute too. <laughs> and feel free, you guys, if you want to follow any of these artists, you can uh, just go to the hashtag on Instagram um, and you can just see all of the entries there. This one was really beautiful. This one was from... Um, uh, uh, Daily Christine's um, episode right, that we had right before Elena's. This was a representation of hers. Very beautiful, done in, it looks like watercolor and colored pencil, really pretty. And this one was one that um, was done of mine for bedtime stories. Very cute, they changed it to a moose. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. I know it's so cute. Oh, he looks so concerned. Maybe he's maybe he's reading a a scary story. <laughs> Umicorn says, "Love the one with the huge bear at the bus stop." Oh yeah, that was from Reagan's as well. This one, um, Captain Fuzzball. Uh, they are very active in our Photoshop Discord a lot. Um, they were posting their um, works in progress in the Photoshop Discord of this one and they're all, I love it. They're all jammed into the little bus stop there. It's very cute. <laughs> so many cute ones. Oh, and this one I saw um, earlier this morning of, uh, um, of mine for bedtime stories. <laughs> Such a cute little bunny and he's got like a little carrot uh, stuffed toy in bed oh, too. Oh yeah, oh, really <laughs> cute. Um, LES green. This one was for um, my pirate, uh, pirate bear, uh, air pirate one. Um, they were posted. This was posted in the Photoshop Discord too, I think. Um, but the texture on the clouds and everything in the background for this one was really cool. I really love all the details in this one. <laughs> And it's really neat to see um, some people doing traditional work too. This one looks like it's done um, in watercolor. Very cute. The way that they did the um, tree reminds me of Winnie the Pooh a lot. Mm -hmm. 
oh, there's Elena's. <laughs> this was yeah. Elena's that she did of the bus stop one of mine uh, with the bear and the alligator. This one was super cute. I love the the color palette on this one was uh, one of my favorites. I really love the um, this pink that you added in to give it like a pop. That's yeah, really thank nice. you. This one I took. It took me many hours. I really enjoyed. Like I just wanted to take the time because everything was so precious to me. I just took all the time it needed, and I I really happy with the result. I can see that all my hours are making it better. Yeah, worth it. Totally worth yeah. it. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, I really appreciate you all joining us today. And again, please uh, feel free to come back tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, I also wanted to mention next week is Adobe Max. Um, don't forget that. Don't forget to register for Adobe Max as well. And we are also going to be having a one-off episode next Monday um, at 2 to 3 p.m. PST um, with a, an awesome artist Cor uh, named Corey Cox. Um, one-off episode for Draw This In Your Style. So don't forget about that. Check the schedule. Um, you can add it to your Google Calendar if you don't want to miss it. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today, Elena. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you. And Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm happy uh, also that people came. It's really, I wish I could ask more questions about them as well. But yeah, I guess yeah, of course. We can ask, we can ask uh, okay. the people in chat questions tomorrow. Okay. Maybe we'll okay. put the questions on the chat tomorrow. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Don't forget to follow Elena on Instagram and we will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye.